The next project is about steganography. Oh, you know what? I got a video I need, a PowerPoint I need to show you. Heck, I totally forgot to show that to you. Hold on a minute. Let me go get the PowerPoint real quick. Let me pause. Pro this project actually took me quite a bit to modify it, and it didn't work out the way I wanted, but it'll be close. Um, let's go through this, this lecture real quick, okay? Um, this is about steganography and digital watermarking. It's one of the coolest things with having to do with forensics, okay? Um, steganography talks about substitution, injection, generation. We're basically hiding stuff, okay? Hiding stuff inside of pictures, inside of files, okay? So we're going to talk about what it is, how it all works, all that, okay? It comes from steganos and graphene hidden and to write, okay? So we're going to hide something. Most dictionaries basically say it's cryptography. It's not really. It really scrambles it. We're in this one. We're hiding something. We're taking some data and hiding in a picture. Okay. Way back when they tattoo messages on on slaves' heads, send them across. Yeah, you know, they let their hair grow, send them where they were going, shave their heads, read the message. Kind of run out of paper sooner or later, but it would work. Um, they did stuff under wax. They wrote silk messages and swallowed them. Kind of sounds like the drug mules of today. Uh, they dotted letters in text. There's just all kinds of different stuff they did, okay? Um, it says they do, you know, every other letter of a word, stretching letters across words. Anyone see Prison Break Season 1? Yeah. Yes. Remember when he got a letter and he was reading it and whatever it was, oh, your son's dead, whatever, but on the right-hand side it says he was home safe or something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing. You're embedding a message in something else, Okay. But there's a bunch of different ways. Kind of what they still do in prison where they use the, like the letters and then they use like a, a code where they... Like use certain the, ones? Circles, or, yeah, circles ah, or cut yeah. out everything and you have to have the... You have to have the, the key card to make it work. Yeah, so right. Here's an example here. If you look at this font, you'll notice the E's are different. The N's are different. The O's are different. And it says, uh, examples, which plain text, it says flee, but concealed underneath it was the string stay until I come and get you, or stay until I come to you. So you read one thing, but it's really something else. Okay? So that's just another example. Okay? Um, World War II, they were banning knitting instructions. They banned blank paper. So I'm always wondering, how do you ban, ban, ban blank paper? You have to... Uh, you know, I was telling her, you know, we have a deal with copies here. You know, we have to, well, you don't have to pay for copies. You have to pay for paper here. But if I send copy work over to the print shop, it's free. So if I make copies here, it costs. If I send copies to the print shop, it's free. I said, all I need to do is take a blank piece of paper, send it over there, tell them I want 500 copies. <laughs> Won't that work? <laughs> I get 500 sheets of paper that way. They, they didn't think that was so funny. But they, they said that might actually work. But crossword puzzles, ads, stamps, there's a lot of stuff they banned way back when. List of grades. We're still banning that. We can't post those anywhere. All right. Ultimate example, they had the uh, uh, Nobel Peace Prize. It was golden, I think, whatever, and they had to smuggle it out. So they put it in some agua regia, basically melted it, and then extracted the gold out later on. Obviously, they didn't have the metals at the end, but they had the materials the metals were made out of. So kind of cool. Um, Computer science, we no longer need physical. Now we can do it all with computers. We can do it with digital pictures. Uh, Trojan horses, Easter eggs, anyone have seen those things? Everyone play Excel 97, the flight simulator in it? If you've never played it, get a copy of Excel 97. You put a certain thing in a certain box. I had to teach an advanced Excel, Excel class once. And I was like very nervous. Well, what am I going to teach them that they don't already know? So I started off the class by doing that. And they thought that was the coolest thing. So they were my best friends for the whole class. So it's good. But there's Easter eggs in a lot of things. There's stuff hidden and you know, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, there's substitution. Replace things with other things. Okay. Injection. We might stick something in there. Or generation. The cover message. You know, the cover test itself is used to generate the message. So there's a bunch of different ways this can be done. I'm going through this kind of quickly so I can show you the demo. Okay. There's also the least significant bit. Superman 4. Richard Pryor. Anyone remember that? Sold that extra half a penny from everybody's paycheck. That's like the least significant bit. In Europe, a nickel is the smallest thing you can use. So really a penny would be a least significant bit. Well, since it's not being used, you can actually embed data in it. Um, 
There's actually an article yesterday on Google. It was about a new tri not tribe, a new form of transmission. It was like li Lila or something, light and whatever. They're basically they found a way to transmit data using LED light bulbs. They blink them at such a fast rate the human being cannot see it. And an on is a one, an off is a zero, and you can actually transmit messages. They say in the very near future, that's how data will be sent. It's like, it was on Google yesterday. That's just... <laughs> Until somebody wants it. Yeah, well... I think it was on a, uh, Associated Press or Fox News, too. Yeah, it was on... It's amazing. But, you know, again, there's always going to be a drawback to it, but it's just amazing what they can do. All right, so here we're sticking the data in here. All right, um... Here we go. We got a picture of a house or something, a house boat on the left. We can actually embed it in a picture of a flower. This talks about it. We're going to actually do a demo of it. The way it works is the pixels. You know the whole red, green, blue thing? You all know what pixels are, the color that we see in pictures. We can't see the color variations as much, yet the computer can. So we can actually modify the colors just a hair. Like here, they're putting the letter A in by manipulating the last bit. And did the color change? Yes, just slightly, that the computer can pick it up, but we'll never be able to see it. So, kind of scary stuff. All right. You can also embed stuff in WAV files, MP3 files, video files, TCP headers. Uh, TCP header has a bunch of stuff we don't need. The urgent flag, the don't fragment flag. There's a bunch of other components of the TCP header that are bogus. We don't need them anymore, so why not start embedding stuff in them? So there's a lot of stuff we can do. Assembly language, there's just a bunch of it. Um, let's look at a couple of these. I'm going to go to this first one first. This is called Snow. Let's see if I get the right page. All right, anyone know how web pages work? What happens with magic? Yes, they work with magic. Uh, web pages work with, um, what happens if I put 10 spaces between a letter and a web page? Anyone know? You, there, you only get one. On a web page, one space or ten spaces is the same. It doesn't matter. So that's what this uses. We'll say, hi, hi there, how are you? The password will be test, okay? You all agree there's nothing down here in the bottom box. You can see my cursor's up at the edge. So I'm going to embed my message. Now if I get down here, you'll actually see there's actually something down here now. Okay? So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go up here and delete my message, extract it. I get my message back. If you don't believe me that it worked, I'm going to get down here and delete something. I, the, I basically cut off half of my message. So we can actually use white space on a web page because on a web page, that white space will be ignored. It will all be shown up as one space. So that's just one way you can do it. It's kind of, kind of weird. Right, or you know, use non-breakable spaces. But I mean, there's for the most part, you get through it. You get through it. Uh, there's exe stuffer, which we're not going to look at, but this is a good one. I, this is my absolute favorite one. All right, I'm going to encode a message here. Okay, my message is going to be, "Hi there, how are you?" Okay, I'm going to encode this <clears throat> message. There you are. There's my message. My message has been created into spam. Okay. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to decode it. Obviously, I got my message back, okay? Now, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to delete this A right there and have, okay? Just removing the A. Decode. Now, I get bogus. Uh, I'm going to back over here. I'm going to put the A back in. Now, I get my message. So, by manipulating just a hair, I totally crept the whole entire message, okay? You all see that? Uh, a couple years ago, I haven't done it lately, a couple years ago, this was the final exam, by the way. I sent the students that, that spam email, and if they decoded it, it said, you know, send me an email and get 100 on the final. I had people replying back, please remove me from your list. <laughs> like, what the heck? And I said, obviously, you would have known what it is if you paid attention to the lecture. But it was, it was funny. So, maybe I'll do this to you. Who knows? All right. So. Bunch of different ways you can do it. Uh, the demo we're going to use is with pictures. The wave and the exe stuffing is it's too hard to detect. Okay? Now, so basically, it's taking out the process of analyzing to erase, decode, and detect. Uh, you're gonna, we're going to do those. 
Erasing is the easiest. We just changed something. You saw I changed that one A, and what happened to my message? Totally gone. So changing it in any way, it's gone. So erasing is very simple, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Decoding is the hardest part. You really have to figure out what it was done with, and we're going to use a specific tool. Okay, sometimes it's encrypted, sometimes it isn't. Detecting is the most important part, though. You need to find that something's there, and then you can worry about, you know, getting rid of it, okay? Uh, covert channels uh, is another way of doing You know, military, you know, worries about stuff. Child pornography, we can hide stuff. Uh, when I was in Tulsa, there was a guy from the cyber crimes unit there, was, came into our friends' class, was talking about cases they worked on. And he says uh, there was one case where they caught a known child pornographer with no porn. And they're like, what's the deal? Well, what it was is he had all these CD-ROMs of golf course pictures. He's a big, avid golfer. All the golf, course, golf courses had child porn inside of them. So he ran steganography against it and got all the pictures out of the golf course. So you never know. Okay, you never know. Okay. Digital watermarking. Um, this is not porn, by the way. I used to, t you know, Bark, on Bark Connors, the, the gymnast, the gold medal? I used to do his website. So I had... I had all, you know, Bart and Nadia. I used to do their website for years, and this was their website, one of the pictures on there. And is that picture still viewable? I mean, you still see it, but you see the stuff across the middle that says gymnast? It's kind of like the prom pictures you get with your kids, or when you graduate from Rose State, you see them, they got something across them. You can see the picture, but if you want it without it, you got to pay for it. So what Bart Connors did, you get this picture for free. If you want it without that, then you're paying the, whatever the fee was. So that's called watermarking, okay? Okay, it's really for integrity. Confidential, so, you know. Like, say you buy pictures and you have those on there. You scan it with, is, with the tools we use, can we take that off? No. It's very, 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 very hard. Very hard, okay? The goals of digital, digital watermark says, does not impair the image, video, audio. We can still see it. So we know that was a girl, Okay. Cannot be removed without destroying it. Now, with Photoshop, yes, you could fix that. But it would be a lot of work. You'd have to be really good at Photoshop. Okay? So we're embedding a very small amount of information, and we're just putting it all over. Okay? Uh, between the two of them, so the amount of data, it's taken off. We want to put as much as we can embedded it. Digital watermark, just a small amount. We just want to put a name on it or, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, ease of detection, very hard for steganography. Watermarking, do we care if it's detected? That's the whole point. We want it detected. We want people to know that it's theirs. So they don't steal the stuff. Removal, they're both difficult. The attacker's goal is to detect it or to remove it. So there's you know, a bunch of different uses for all of these things. All right, let's continue. If you go to this website here, stegoarchive.com, there is tons of steganography tools up here. If it works. It's always worked in the past. Uh, they are rebooting our switches here tonight at Rose State to solve our slowness issue. They might have just done it. <laughs> Come on. I guess, am I still online? Okay, I think I'm still online. Well, great. Now my link ain't working no more. Come on. Is it working or no? Yeah. All right. Well, maybe that website's down. But check on it later. Stego Archive. But I'm going to give you the tools you need for the project. That's not an issue. But there are other ones up there. The one I'm going to give you is buggy, it crashes, and it's old, but it's not been updated. So it's still the best one out there, okay? I know, it sucks. That's the way it is. All right, so I'm going to demonstrate all these tools to you in a minute. Uh, the tools are very small, fit on a floppy disk. They're actually in the, the lab, okay? Here's a conclusion. Uh, this was in 2002. Lady Al-Qaeda operatives have been sending hundreds of encrypted messages that have been hidden in files and digital photographs on eBay. The volume of messages has nearly doubled in the past month, indicating to some youth intelligence officers that they are planning an attack. Think about it. Where's the best place to share pictures? Flickr, eBay, all that stuff. So you're also doing that now? Hey, Syria. Syria's? Yeah, nice. Yeah. This was from 2010. I'm not going to check it again. But eBay figured out a way around it. This is a picture of a Camaro. See in the bottom right-hand corner? I know some of you that are in the cheap seats can't see it. But it's actually a camera. What they do is they, they digitally <coughs> embed a watermark of a camera. Because remember, we learned that you modify it in any way, what happens to the image? Kills the message. Kills the message. So eBay, for the longest time, was embedding those. They still are, but you can no longer see the camera. Now it's just a, a, a pixel somewhere. 
But they're all doing it, even Flickr and all them. You send your message up there, they edit it slightly to prevent that. So, kind of cool. All right. Authorities have been investigating information from detainees that suggest Al-Qaeda members are possibly even bin Laden or hiding messages inside pornographic files on pornographic websites. They're using this stuff. But it'd be good. Don't If they watch porn, they have to kill themselves. I don't think bin Laden is <laughs> doing much of anything. Yeah, but this is back in 2002. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. But there was a lot of stuff about that there, okay? It uh, says, so steganography is used when it's important to conceal the fact that communication is taking place. There's a lot of programs, actually, in this class we're going to use that are, could be malicious, and these are one of them, okay? There's a bunch of links on here as well. I'll put the slides up for you, okay? I did not make those. I stole them. All right. Now, up on D2L, not on that page, on this page, I put a Dropbox for this lab. All right. I got to download the tools that are in there so you can see them. Now I'll be using the same exact tools you guys got. Okay, I put a PDF and also put these tools in here. Stegotools.zip. I'm going to save this. I'm going to save it under my C drive. Okay. So I'm going to demo how this whole blooming thing works. These tools are command line versions. Just like foremost and scalpel. Okay? There is a GUI version which really sucks. Now, I'm going to un ah, what the heck? Extract all to what? I can't why can't I put it there? What the heck is going on? We'll try it with 7-zip then. There we go. That was weird. All right. I unzipped them to a directory called Stego Tools. And then another directory called Tools, and here they are. Here's what we're going to use. If you just click on these, you get that. See it? You click on this, you get this. I'm telling you, it never fails. I get students all the time. The day before it's due. Oh, that's like some of you today. Uh, I click on it, and that's all it does. So many people contact me the day they're due. <clears throat> By the exception of the last lab, everything's been graded for you guys 100%. If you wonder how I graded the uh, manual recovery, I just counted the images you recovered. So if you were smart enough, you got six of some of the easy ones, you could have got off without doing all of them. Oh, so. <laughs> Darn the bad luck. <laughs> could have got all the JPEGs and PDFs and skipped the PowerPoints, but that's how I graded it. It was out of 24. So if you got more than 24, you're good. I know. Sorry about that. All right. Here's our tools. All right. Now, inside here, I have a picture. This is a picture. It's called Church with Mindy. This is a church I used to go to years ago. They had this building built, and I happened to take a picture of it one day. Uh, we're going to look for her. Maybe she's behind the tree. She's not there. Maybe she's over here. Maybe she's She's in the cone? We'll check the cone out. We'll check out the cone. Anybody see Mindy hiding anywhere? Maybe she's over here. Could be by the fire hydrant. No, she's not there either. Okay. Yeah, y'all agree Mindy's not there? All right. For this project, I give you a file, a usage file. Exactly how to use these tools. I mean, switches and everything. I also give you the instructions, steg to tech and steg break. Okay. Feel free to read them. That's awesome. Okay. They're all there. But I do tell you exactly how to use them and how they'll work. Okay. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to detect. Okay. First of all, we got detect and break. Detect finds the images that might have something in it. And I stress might have something in them. Not always. Might. And break breaks the password, which I'll show you how it works. So I'm going to go. I'm going to copy this. Copy. Paste. All right, I got my, my tools in there. I'm going to hit enter. It comes up and says Church with Mindy has a probability of something in it with JP Hyde. Has one asterisk. It means it's, okay, that's 
I mean, it would have said negative. It could have said one asterisk, two asterisks, three asterisks. Now, depending on the, the S, the sensitivity level, it might give you negative. It might give you more. So basically, the sensitivity of five is about the best. But it's only an estimate. It might not have anything in it. Okay, well, this one does. But. All right, now let's look at steg break. Okay, so what I recommend you guys do, run steg detect on all the files. The ones that might have something in them, move them somewhere. And then run steg break on them. You can skip steg detect and just run steg break. But it's going to be trying to break every, every one, and you happen to have 3,000 of them. So it might be quicker to break only the ones, or one, with something in it. So now I'm going to run this one. All right, it's done. Okay, the way this command works, run steg break, and I'm using dash r rules.ini. Let me show you what that file looks like. Rules.ini. Rules.ini is part of John the Ripper, a password cracker. It's the actual file from John the Ripper. This has been modified very slightly, but that's what this tool uses. It's a good tool, and we're going to be playing with that later. So we use that, then we also specify dash F words, and what do you F words? No. And there it is, the dictionary. Uh, you can always add more to it. And it's only going to use the ones in the dictionary unless you modify the rules file, which you do not have to in this case. We'll be doing that later. All right? So far, so good. So you saw what the commands did. And this says look for all JPEGs. This says look for all JPEGs. It's not going to do GIFs or anything else. Just do JPEGs. So if we move the file to another, like all the ones that we think have something in them, move to our file, we have to specify that file thing to the command line. What I would do if I was you, if I say I find five files, move them into a directory called found or something. Take these tools, put them in with it. And run it from the same directory. Because you can specify C, colon, slash, blah, blah, blah. But it's just easier to run it from the same directory. Okay? Um, I think you guys actually have it a little bit easier this year. They had 5,000 files last year in six different directories. This year they're all in one. All right. So now we know there's something in it. So we know JP, uh, Mindy's got something hidden in it with JP Hyde version 5 and the password's church. Imagine that. So now I'm going to bring up this tool, JPSH Win. This is the tool that crashes. I'm going to accept my terms. See, it's beta version 0.5. So I'm going to open up that, to that, that picture. I'm going to open up the one with Mindy. Have you with me so far? So I open the picture with Mindy. I'm going to seek. Remember, there's already some minutes. So I'm going to seek it to find it. Say so seek. The password was church. I'm going to save it as Mindy. JP, D, JPG. There you go. I saved it. Now we have a new file in here called Mindy.jpg. There's Mindy. And Mindy and her dad. That was embedded inside the other picture. Okay. If I run this again, I'm going to run detect again. Okay. Mindy's negative. There's nothing embedded inside of Mindy, but I could have put something inside of Mindy. I did a contest years ago where I had one thing from each class, and for forensics, I had this. I had something embedded in a picture, but then there's something embedded in that picture. No one got it. All you had to do was run it again. It was like, oh, wait a minute, there's something in that one too. But you will see this whole corrupt JPG premature end of data. That's fine. You're going to see it quite often. When you're, when you're going through thousands of pictures, it's, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Now, um, something I can't show you because it's going to go too fast. Well, maybe. Let's try it. Where's break? When it runs, I can hit Control C. See that? It's telling me what percentage I am. I'm in Control C one time. It tells me what word it's working on, what percentage it's done. So remember, Mindy is taking all this time. So I'm saying if you have 2,000 files, and if you run it against ones that are negative, how long is Mindy going to take all by itself? Quite a while. So if you have 5,000 files that take a few minutes, there's 5,000 a few minutes. Because it's still going on Mindy. So that's what I'm saying. Get the ones that are possibly have something in it. 
And I'm pretty sure the one you're going after says it has something in it. So the last one didn't take long because church is early in the list. Right. Because it begs it up at it. It's just a dictionary lookup. But Mindy, it's like, it's going through its whole dictionary trying to use every word, but there is no answer to it. It's kind of like there's nothing. So you know, all this time, and we're just now at a quarter of the percent, a quarter of the way through it. Hit it twice, it stops it. Okay. Control twice. Control C twice stops it. All right. Let's bring up another tool. Oh, great. That's done. Go away. All right. I'm going to bring up this awesome website. You guys are going to love it. It's kind of cool. Where is mini.com? <laughs> I used this the other day. It's called Google. It's very handy. I know. It's pretty awesome. All right. I'm going to go to images. I'm going to type in sun.jpg. I'm just going to find a picture. We want, a, we want a large one. Where's the size? Where's the option where this says huge or something? Oh, there it is. Large. I want large pictures. Right, anyone liking any particular one? Well, this one's kind of cool. We're going to get this picture. Okay. I'm going to save this picture. Save picture as. And I'm going to put it in my C drive. In my... Stick of tools, tools directory. This is going to be called sun.jpg. Okay. Everyone with me there? So I'm going to go back in here and let's make sure there's nothing in it. Okay. Didn't find nothing. Mindy's negative, sun's negative. Darn it. We tried it and we didn't get one. We're going to keep going until we find one. Not really. That would really suck. Where did my website go? <laughs> yeah, try all those. All right, so I'm going to go back here. Now I want a car. Uh, let's grab a PDF. I want a small one. Teeny tiny one. I want a medium size. I want it any size exactly. I want it, uh, we'll say, 25 by 25. It's going to be a teeny car. But just say we don't have any. All right, there's some. Okay. Oh, that's a PNG file. Didn't I say PDF? That's a PNG of the PDF logo. That's a GIF. What the hell? PNG. Maybe it's because it's too small. Oh, too late. I already clicked the button. We'll just, we'll just get one of these. Okay. Um, well, these are JPEGs. And what do you want to put after it? Like that? Oh, you know what? Why don't I just go to search instead of images, too? All right. I want a teeny one. I want a teeny one. Let's see. Is this one small? Maybe. Okay, you know what? These are going to be too big. Let me just get some. Actually, I know what I can embed there. I got a better idea. Okay, I'm going to bring up this tool. And I'm going to open a JPEG now. I'm going to open up the sun. Remember the sun we got a second ago? All right. And I'm going to hide something in it. I'm going to hide with the password church. We know church is in there. What do, what do they want me to hide? Well, I'm going to hide the instructions PDF. Look at that. I already had one. Okay. And it crashes. <laughs> Did I mention that this tool crashes a lot? But I need those instructions. It's funny. I, I taught this last year, and it didn't crash like five. Well, I thought it crashed. As soon as it did, Is there uh, some source code for that? I'm not sure. There might be. I mean, it's, actually, it's written. In, you get in the DLL. So I don't know. if it, It's probably there somewhere. So we're going to hide again. Church. Now we're going to go back and get a PDF. Let's try it again. And yes. Save JPEG as. We'll say sun with PDF dot JPG. All right. So it's all saved. Now, if you look, I have a picture of the sun. Five, and you had double door and sun warrant. Then there's the sun with, JP, with PDF. There's PDF. There's no PDF. There's without. There's with. Anybody see the difference? 
Yeah, it's right over this corner. It's like right just over the ledge. <laughs> no, dude, it's not there, okay? You're not going to see it. All right, so let me run the detect again. Now we got a problem. Yep. Let's try changing this a little. Okay, let's go the other way. Still nice. Did I get, sometimes it doesn't detect it? I think 10 the max. It tends to max. Sometimes it doesn't get it. Your homework, it might get it. I'll stress might. Now, so sign with PDF is negative. Y'all see that? Now let's try to break it. It loaded them. Aha! Church and church. So it broke it right there. So the tech didn't find it yet. Broke, break, the stake break worked. So, my point is, neither one of these tools are amazing, but they work. Sometimes. <laughs> but just sometimes. All right, aren't you glad I'm having these issues? Because it happens every time. There's always something. That, but again, they're so old. This was made in 99. So now I'm going to open this up to make sure we can actually get it out of it. We're going to open up the JPEG. And we're going to open up Sun with PDF. We're going to Seek. Put in Church. We're going to save it as file.jpg. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a JPEG. So now if I go over here to file.jpg that I save somewhere, I open up, and it's corrupt. Why is it corrupt? It's not a JPEG. It's not a JPEG. So how do I fix that? But exact. That's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Hint, you might want to know how to do this for the homework assignment. Because you know it ain't a JPEG. So, I'm going to open up that file with a hex editor. Whoops. I didn't install the license key. <laughs> All right. I have the key down in my office. I just didn't install it here. Well, then, aha, it ends in percent percent EOF. Ah, PDF right there. Yeah, uh -huh, take that. I found it. So, I open the file up, and I found that it's actually a PDF file. So then I go in here, and I say, oh, it's not a JPEG, it's a PDF. There it is. And the cool thing is, if you were to bring that file called file.jpg into either FDK or NCASE, guess what it would do? It would open with PDF. Because it doesn't look at the extension. The whole extension thing is a Windows thing. It's basically which program to associate with it, but that's so misleading. Right. What they do is they look at all, they look at nothing but header analysis or signatures, and then they automatically open up the correct application, which is very nice. So even though it said JPEG was still open as a PDF. So everybody okay on how the tool works? You're going to be using just those tools.